It's all gone. <laughs> Lewis, welcome to the Curious Coaches Learning Platform, where we um, share loads of golden nuggets with coaches and players, and hopefully today we can add some value. Um, thank you for your time. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Now, firstly, as always, give us a little bit of a backstory of Lewis. Um, yeah, well, well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, but yeah, it was, I kind of got into coaching um, the standard way, started playing a few injuries, took a bit too much time on the sideline and then um, managed to get into coaching quite early. Um, and then obviously outside of rugby, I do a lot of personal training, like the one-to-one -one coaching. Um, and then kind of through the similarities of team coaching and rugby and one-to-one -one coaching, I kind of built a few philosophies around like the similarities of, you know, how to improve as an individual as well as an athlete, basically. Um, and yeah, I got into sevens coaching, started my own sevens team with the Cats about six years ago. Um, and then that's just grown and grown and grown. Oh, that's brilliant. And really curious around uh, Coach Pratt. Obviously, you say some pretty um, amazing stuff uh, on social media. Um, where did that start for you? How, does, how did it evolve? Well, so a, a big thing for me personally was I had a really <clears throat> um, like big identity shift around, oh, must be around seven or eight years ago now. Um, where it actually started with me changing my name on Instagram from, I think it was like L Pratt's PT to Coach Pratt's. And it, it's, it was a nothing thing to me at the time. But then that Instagram profile kind of gave me an accountability of, of who I needed to be to be this highly successful coach that I wanted to be. You know, I wanted to be, um, I've always wanted to be a leader. I've always liked taking up leadership roles. And I think when I made that Coach Pratt's like transition, I started having this identity where, I just had to begin to, to act as if I was at Coach Pratt. So I used that Instagram account to keep me accountable. So like with my own, with my training, with the content I was creating for people, everything had to be in line with being this person who's, you know, stoic, um, a, a selfless leader, willing to push people, helping other people reach their potential. You know, that for me was a, was a big shift because I was always at school, the bare minimum. You know, I was lazy. I cut every corner I could. Um, if there was a way to do less work, I would find a way. And I was always told, you'll never reach your potential, never reach potential. Such a shame. Lewis has got all this potential, but you'll never reach it. Um, and then that slowly ate at me. And then one day I was like, how, what, like, why? Why don't I try? Why don't I go after the things I want? Um, and then that tied in with that identity change. And all of a sudden, you know, all these doors started opening. I was like, why have I not been doing this for you know, the last 10 years. And, and how did you arrive at the point where you decided to change that, that identity? Was that just uh, in the moment thing? Or, or I'm just curious to where that, where that, yeah, where that, that came from. I don't know. I think, you know, I knew something had to change. I felt like I was treading water for a while with my career, with my training. Um, it was just when I was, um starting to get into the sevens coaching on the circuit as well and you know I, I wanted to be a coach I wasn't an athlete anymore I wasn't a personal trainer I was a coach um so that kind of kick-started the idea and then when I did it and with the books I was reading at the time it just all kind of snowballed from there oh that's that's brilliant yeah like you you, you know these things always happens in the in the moments when we spend daydreaming, <laughs> they, yeah, these yeah, thoughts exactly. just, they just find yourself. So that, that's pretty, pretty incredible. Um, and then just how would Coach Brax describe curiosity? Um, like for me, curiosity is, is such a big element of, of, it should be everyone's life. You know, it should be coaches, you know, parents, students, teachers, whatever. You know, curiosity is just looking for solutions, in, in, in my opinion, you know, because if you're curious about something, you know, you're just objectively trying to, trying to find something out for yourself. You're trying to find a solution. If you're curiously looking for something, 
even if you don't know what it is, you're, you're looking for a solution. So at the very basic level, for me, curiosity is, is problem solving, but with no sort of um, judgment on what comes out. You're not expecting an outcome. You, you, you want to find something out, and, but it won't be good or bad. You're just finding something out. Um, and I think this is something I coach a lot more with my mentees or with members at the gym than, than actually I do coach a bit in, in the rugby side of things, is that you should meet all adversity with curiosity. All problems that come up, like you, you've got to meet them with curiosity because it takes away any of the pressure. You, know, you can look for a solution without you know, the outcome breaking you or you know, making you feel worse. So it's just this idea of you can always look for a solution um, and it doesn't have to be a good solution or a bad solution, but you'll always be able to find something if you're just curious about it rather than it just being you know, black and white. Yeah, I love, I love that description of, of curiosity. It's, it's, yeah, it's always about finding solutions to your own problems and it links very much to what you, what you said with how you find, how you found coach Bratch as well. Um, mm. Obviously there was, there was a incredible amount of curiosity, um, uh, subconscious curiosity properly and yeah. where you, where you find yourself to, to that name change ultimately. Um, so when you just mentioned there um, having these, uh, or coach in this particular way within rugby and your and your mentees when you when you do your mentoring program. So when you explain this concept to people, how do they respond or react to this level of information? So so I'll always explain it as everything is an experiment. You know, see yourself as everything going on in your life. Let's talk about life and then rugby. So your day to day life. Say you want to get better at your job. You want to get better at um, being consistent at the gym, being consistent with nutrition, something like that in, in, in your life. You know, if you put too much emphasis on the outcome, then you can get a fear of getting started, a fear of failure, you can procrastinate, all the anxiety that comes with that. Whereas if you just look at it as an experiment, then the fear of failure goes. Like a scientist just takes an experiment and the outcome's the outcome. And they, and they learn from the outcome and they go again. You know, that's all science is, is trial and error, learning from your failures. Yeah, and what do all the best coaches say? You watch any sporting documentary with a high level coach, you know, an Alex Ferguson, uh, Clive Woodward, a David Brailsford, what do they say? They all say, try, try, learn, try, fail, learn, try, fail, learn. And even if you have a 90% failure rate, you're eventually gonna succeed. And then you learn from that and you go again. So I think, Explaining it as an experiment where there is no good or bad outcome. We're just trying to find some stuff out and then whatever happens, positive or negative outcome, we'll learn from it and get better and, and use failure as like a stepping stone. So I think I always explain curiosity and everything in this way as you're just sitting back, observing and have an experiment. And whatever the outcome, you learn from it and go again. I think that immediately for when people, when it really clips with people, is they start to understand that you know, oh, it's, it's not that bad if I fail. You know, so what? I went for a pass out the back and it went straight into touch. You know, so what? If, if I have pressure, I'm not even going to attempt that pass. Whereas if it's an experiment, if I've got freedom to do what I want, I'm more than likely going to take that risk. And then eventually, with enough risks, I'll find success that risk, and then I'll be consistently successful with it. So it's taking the pressure um, and the fear of failure away from people by saying, it's just an experiment, you know, whatever the outcome, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's a great way of looking at, um, because you'll definitely, the level of exploration will, 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 will go to high levels, um, if you sell it in that particular way to look yeah. at it as a as a as an experiment so if you if we have to provide this information to a, a young aspiring 
uh, coach, whether it's a rugby coach or an athletics coach, S and C coach, or whatever it, what it is, because um, you know all or we all want to um, be successful through our coaching. Um, ultimately, to achieve success through the way yeah. we coach. So, um, this will definitely put a young coach or even an experienced coach or um, whoever it might be. This will put them in a stretch zone. Um, so how do we how do we develop a system around it, or how do we provide that that process uh, for any particular coach to go? Here's a framework for you, a simple framework yeah. for you um, to make you comfortable within the stretch zone. Yeah, it's, it's a good question because obviously everyone's got different ways of of applying this, but for, for me, it's completely within your culture whether you're coaching, you know one individual whether you're coaching a group of four a, a big team of 30 i think you've got to really destigmatize failure because you know so many of your athletes will be great athletes but they're just so scared of messing up or they're scared of people seeing them fail or you know any of the pressure that comes with that and if you can just completely get rid of that fear of failure make failure a good thing you know make it that look, we're going to fail forward so every session that people step in if that's your culture People are trying new things. People have that freedom to explore and learn from their mistakes and grow and get better and learn from each other as well. And I think, I think, yeah, a fear of failure stops so many more athletes progressing than a lack of ability. So I think as a young coach or, you know, experienced coach, anyone, the first thing you want to do is you want to make that, make sure that your culture supports athletes and feeling comfortable with trying new things and failing. And understanding that the more you fail, you know, every single time you fail, it's a step forward. Even if it's 100, 100 failures in a row, that 101st one, you needed those 100 steps to get to there. And I think it, it's, it's freeing for your athletes or your staff or, or you know, whoever you're coaching and supporting. It, it's freeing. And they can, be, as I said, they can be themselves more, they can explore more, um, and they can enjoy it more a lot as well which is you know the, the the main thing that we should be looking for in our sessions is that our athletes are enjoying it i think i don't know where i think it's a plato quote where it's you can learn more from a man with one hour of play than a hundred years work you know so you so even having this sort of attitude i know this is you down to a t you love talking about play and what that does for creativity and exploration and like you'd learn more about your athletes by having this sort of culture and the more you know about them the more you can help them the more you can help them the more successful they'll be yeah no that's 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 a really great way of, of thinking and i love i love those con concepts around um making failure um making failure uh, a place where where you can express yourself and, and yeah. yeah there's not many environments where you can go to where um failure lives there comfortably i always ask the question where does failure live in your environment <laughs> and, and i get get really massive eyes yeah. staring back at me going oh, what's this guy on about why is he yeah, asking me fail. what do you mean i don't fail my athletes don't fail it's like well that's not what you think it means yeah, so it's, it's always a great question to ask when you um, when when you go into into a new environment. Um, but linking this to the way you live your life, um, I suppose it's. I always say it. It must start with ourselves. Everything starts with ourselves. So it's always great to say, look, this is the environments that we want to create. But this that is that the true identity of who we are as people because it, it's pointless telling them ah you can go and fail but um yeah, you yeah. actually you shit in your pants whenever you have to put your your foot into that uncomfortable zone um so uh, just going back to um some of the stuff like you, you you're very much around the idea of mindfulness and how you live your life meditating um uh, being fully present in the moment um 
so again there's a lot of curiosity around around these great themes that are around us based on um uh, just the current climate where we find ourselves um so i would imagine it's pretty uncomfortable um getting yourself there uh, i know you've you've posted some challenges out there or, um or tracking the journey around uh, the number of days you meditated etc um so tell us a little bit more around around how you ultimately make yourself better as a person to be able to to perform comfortably within these uncomfortable uh scenarios you you sort of put yourselves in yeah um that's really good so when um before well it wasn't like eight or nine years ago um i was met with loads of adversity so loads of injuries um i got severely ill for a few months um, and it was through all this adversity and this, I kind of had this mindset of like, oh, you know, why are all these bad things happened to me? Why can't I catch a break? Why am I so unlucky? And, you know, that was the narrative in my head. Um, and then slowly through trying loads of different things, I ended up getting into um, Buddhism and Stoicism. And those are two like core um, pillars in my identity now. Um, but they really helped me one transform my narrative when it came to adversity and problems and uncomfortable situations and also helped me build momentum and confidence to get out of there and get to where I am today um with with the buddhism it was this idea of mindfulness that kind of intrigued me with it of, of like being able to be free and they talk about it in stoicism a lot as well freedom you know what is freedom is it not having a job is it not having to worry about money freedom at the most basic level is being free from your own emotions and problems your internal problems that a lot of people suffer with day to day and it, it's why mental health is at a kind of an all-time low with people is because we've got so many internal problems and situations that we're we're faced with day to day and with meditation and mindfulness and being able to be present we can get out of our own way we can get away from those problems and this idea of kind of the majority of my problems in my head being my own fault which is a lot of stoicism really appealed to me and then the more and more i got into it the more I, more i looked at to the into the physiological effects of stress you know the fight or flight response you know, that is designed at the most basic level to be identify a threat deal with it and move on you know fight it or run away move on Whereas nowadays, we're just inundated with multiple unsolvable worries. You know, imagine, imagine you're in debt or something like every single day that, that is stressing you out and on your mind. It's not identify, deal with it and move on. You've got these worries that are day to day to day to day. And so people are living their lives in this fight or flight response where the body is reacting emotionally to things and we're not in control and we're doing things we wouldn't normally want to do whereas when we're mindful when we take time to breathe and like unhook from all of that and just kind of sit back and be like you know what i'm just observing like an experiment i'm just observing all these thoughts and problems within myself then the pressure goes the fear of failure goes and you can actually start to gain freedom over how you think and feel on a daily basis and I, I, you know, six, seven years past of me looking at kind of getting further and further into meditation and, and, and more so stoicism now. And then I came across the Johnny Wilkinson episode on the High Performance Podcast. Now, I know, you, so. it, yeah, any coach, it, it should be the first thing they listen to, um, the first podcast they listen to, and they should listen to it as often as possible. It's one of the best episodes on how to really understand this process. And he talks about it as full engagement, okay? And I've only ever heard of it before in meditation and, and mindfulness as being present. But you have to be present to be fully engaged. You're not thinking about what's happening later. You're not thinking about what happened yesterday. You're fully engaged with what's going on. And I think looking at everything as, I need to be engaged with this moment, same as on a rugby pitch, you know? If you knock the ball over the try line, um, and you know, you've given up that opportunity. If that sits with you for the rest of the game, how are you going to play? You've got to, you've got to fully engage with the next task. 
And I think having that attitude of winning these moments, you know, that moment to moment to moment to moment, there's always going to be a new thing to solve. There's always going to be a new problem to get past. There's always going to be an option to win. And just thinking that if I can stay present, I don't need to win the match. I just need to win this, this moment. And then the next moment comes and I'm going to win that. And the next moment comes. And then by the end of the 80 minutes, you know, you've built so much forward momentum that you, you, you're going to leave feeling better and feeling like you've done your best. So I, I think mindfulness meditation allows you to engage and be present, see things for what they are and actually be able to break things down and build momentum, like one little thought or action at a time. Yeah, that's that, that's that's brilliant. There's a lot of a lot of cool information in there uh, for any coach, any young point. player. Uh, no, and uh, but this is the great thing. It's such a it's such a topic that there lies so much curiosity within it, um, and where you can explore and the areas you can go to. It is it is it, it, it's a pretty it's a pretty exciting place to be in. Um, but what I love there, I always live my life by. Um, Within adversity lies opportunity. It's our responsibility to find it. So that's 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 my outlook on on how I look at um, adverse situations because there's an opportunity there. It's just how we find it and and what steps we take to to find that. Um, so I'm a coach. I'm listening to this and I'm going. How do I start? Where do I start? What is uh, if you can give three steps or uh how many ever steps but how do we start this is a good point i think as you said b- before i went to that last answer you know if you want to be a good coach it starts with with you not how you coach but how you act you know when no one's watching and and, and the books you're reading the the information you're supplying yourself with um, and the things you're doing outside of the coaching time so i think if if i was a coach and i was wanting to start kind of getting into a headspace where you can, as I said, see adversity as, as an opportunity rather than something to break you down. Um, my, my initial reaction would be just find books on stoicism. <laughs> like, I don't know why this isn't just mainstream. This should be in schools. It's the most unbelievable philosophy of how, you know, life's a series of problems. Things are going to go wrong every single day, no matter what you do but you always have a, a choice in how you respond. So my first thing would be go get, you know, The Obstacle is the Way, Stillness is the Key, um, Courage is Calling, any of these books by Ryan Holiday. And I would just read them cover to cover straight through and just go, wow, like I have so much more control and power over how I feel on a day-to-day basis than I thought I did. Um, if they wanted to get into meditation, mindfulness, which I, I do get, it's still kind of stigmatized a bit for some people. They think it's a bit woo-woo, spiritual nonsense and stuff. But all it's doing is, is counteracting the effects of stress. You're just sitting, telling yourself to, I'm just going to sit here, shut up and breathe. Yeah, and, and that's all it is. And if you want to get started with meditation, um, the Oak Meditation app is the defining factor in what got me consistent. I was meditating for about three years on and off a couple times per week you know 10 minutes here and there and then just after using the oak meditation app i did 249 days in a row after never being able to do more than a month just because that accountability you know we're all if we're coaches we're usually quite competitive especially with ourselves and and it it keeps a streak of days and that made me stay accountable to myself and and through that i managed to improve with meditation over time because that's one of the things of meditation is the first couple of months you do it, it feels like you're doing it wrong the whole time and it doesn't get any easier from there. So I think finding a way to keep yourself accountable with it, to keep pushing through, even though it feels like nothing's happening, um, that's quite an important part of getting started with mindfulness and meditation and being able to you know, dictate how you feel a little bit more. Um, I don't really have a third point. Those, those would be my, my two points. <laughs> well, the third point would be then to go and try and put things into practice, engage, you know, 
yeah. try to yeah. get better at not just thinking about what you're doing next actually be where you are be here now and, and do what you're doing yeah you know? that's great lessons it's great lessons it's it, it's simple it's efficient um i'm really curious around 240 days habits bring success mm -hmm. how did you create that habit because you've you've given you've given coaches great tools there there's some valuable lessons of how you can start it to get yourself more fully present to what you do because i yeah. always uh I always stand and watch coaches and i find myself we um we 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 always curious about the stuff we want to see our perception of of whatever that particular thing is and we've we forget the whole thing, but the more you can um, straight back to points you've highlighted, observe, because observation is one of the greatest coaching skills, but you only get there when you're fully present in a moment and you can really see yeah. everything that's happening around you. So that's really great lesson. But how do we create these habits? Because habits bring success. We, we know habits yeah. bring success, but if you don't have a clear system of how you're going to um work on these these particular things so uh, so it, it might be as simple as co a coach that really wants to improve in a particular area of his coaching um but he's doing stuff periodically in your case mm -hmm. it was around um how you use this app to your advantage um so uh, have you got some goal there you can dish out yeah so like ha habits are just it's just practice you know Practice is practice. Whatever you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, you're practicing. You know, if you're looking at your phone 12 hours a day, how good are you going to be at being distracted by your phone in, in five years' time? You know, the body adapts to whatever you're doing. It doesn't care if it's a good practice or a bad practice. It will just get more efficient at whatever you're doing most often. I think just having that idea of like, I'm either going to be starting good habits or bad habits. You know, and I need to be conscious of my good habits or I'm just automatically going to fall to the bad ones. So that's the first thing is knowing that you've just got to put the time in. The body will adapt to anything, anything. As long as you've got stress, rest, you'll grow. Stress and rest and you'll grow. So the first thing is just knowing that it's all about the reps. How many repetitions can I get and how consistent can I be with those repetitions? If you want to get, you know, if you want to start reading more books, like I said just before, Cool, buy those books, set an alarm, make it specific. 10 a.m. every day, I'll read 10 pages. It's a non-negotiable. And then start tracking those habits. Because that's what you need to do. You need to, well, everyone needs to get better at keeping promises to themselves. We live in a day and age now where it's so easy to say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow and then not do it. Or I'm going to start going to the gym and then not go. You know, we need to, start keeping the promises we make to ourselves and we need to reward ourselves for doing so so we can start building trust and a good relationship with, our, with ourselves you know if you had a mate who was meant to meet you at the gym five days in a row and every day they're like you know what i'm not coming today how much respect are you can have for that mate and that but then people find it fine doing that to themselves day, day in day out over time so i think it's just about setting a clear intention of, of what habits you want to improve what is the thing that i want to repeat is it reading every day is it meditating is it spending 15 minutes journaling every morning you know setting out how i want to coach say how i want to live today whatever it is just get very clear on it and then just repeat it repeat it as often as possible because just like going to the gym doing your bicep curls if you're going and putting the reps in you're going to get stronger, you're going to get better, and you're going to get more efficient at it as well. And those biceps are going to get bigger. So biceps are going to get bigger. Go. Exactly. It's simple coaches, coaches, players, it's simple. Whoever you are, build your system, create your system, and put the reps in on a daily basis. But make exactly. sure those reps are purposeful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, um, it's not practice makes perfect, perfect practice makes perfect. I think that's one that you told me before, you know, just because you brush your teeth every day for 30 years doesn't mean that you're going to be any better at brushing your teeth. You know, you, there's got to be an intention behind it. There's got to be a reasoning um, and a direction of how, how you want to get better with it. Yeah, 100% agree with that point. Um, look, I would 
have you on here all day. But uh, I could, I could. This is great. <laughs> I love, I love these conversations. But lastly, let's leave our people with um, um, what another last point is, and you've probably gone over some of these, uh, some of these during our conversation so far. But if you've got game-changing principles that you live your life by, what would those game-changing principles be? Um, I got, I got three. I got three good ones. Um, the first is is being growth-minded. Just at the core of everything you do, challenges make me stronger. You know, no matter what it is. So what you set up, I don't know, a coaching example, the perfect training session and one person turns up. So what? That's a challenge. Deal with it. You know, so you go a complete season losing and all your players are, aren't motivated and you've got to get them ready for the new season. So what? Challenges make me better. Without struggle, there's no growth. So that's, that's the first one. The second one is excellence is a choice, which is a, a stoic principle, again, um, from Aristotle. You know, if you want good things to happen, if you want to be excellent, you need to choose it moment to moment to moment to moment. You know, it's not going to happen by accident. The way the world's built now, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. So, so the second one is excellence is a choice. You need to choose to be excellent every single moment that you're doing your job, every single moment that you're at home, every single moment you can. And over time, again, you'll adapt and it'll become a habit. Um, and the last one, hard choices, easy life. My favorite one. You know, if you make easy choices now, if you go for instant gratification, take the easy choices now, your life is going to be hard in the future. Whereas if you take the hard option now, your life's going to be easy in the future because you're going to get stronger, you're going to get better, and you're going to have always done the difficult thing before it needs to do it. So, so those are the main three. Um, challenges make me better. Excellence is a choice. Hard choice is easy life. Love it. Love it. Love your work. Great way to summarize our, our conversation. And hopefully we'll have some more growth minded uh, coaches and players out there um, or just growth minded people. Uh, yeah. Remember, excellence is a choice. Pick the hard ones because they make you better. Love 100%. your work. Love your work. Thank you for your time today. Um, Thanks so much. It was a great now it's great having you here on the Curious Coaches Learning Platform. So I'm pretty sure there's some awesome gold here for, for anyone listening um, or watching us today. So thank you for your time, brother. Yeah. No, thanks so much. Um, definitely do this again sometime. 100%. We need a part two. Yeah, yeah.